Welcome to Around the Dog World, a very special episode this month from Bonnie, Scotland, where we take a look at a selection of hounds and native Scottish breeds. As usual in March and April, the dog show community takes a little break to regroup after the frenzied exhilaration of the sport's biggest event, Crufts. And for a second year in a row, we watched the previous year's top dog winner taking the ultimate crown. Crufts' best in show 2014 was standard poodle Ricky, champion, American champion, afterglow Maverick Sabre. Well, congratulations again, Mike. That's uh, a Thank month. You. Has it uh, gone in yet? Uh, yeah, I was. Um, it's interesting, really. After all the hysteria and what have you on the night, the following day, my back was in such a state once I'd taken the morphine patch off that I spent the next week in bed and had to have an MRI scan. And, well, literally, I was lying flat on my back in agony for a week. I mean, at one point, my 89 year old mother had to put my socks and shoes on. <laughs> I mean, it was a mess, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It was like the memory of it sort of helped. I'll bet. And Ricky is, is obviously now retired from the show ring in the UK, yeah. uh, but Jason is across in, in the States and uh, he's going to give him his final goodbye over there. Uh, Jason's gone over for the rest of April, which is very nice for him. <laughs> I'm going flying out on my birthday, which is on the 22nd. And Happy birthday, don't forget. Him. Yeah, don't forget and meeting Jason in Salisbury, Maryland, where Poodle Club of America yeah. is. And Jason will show Ricky for the last time there. So. And of course, Ricky was there last year with Jason and has already done quite well of it. Yeah, he was best of winners last year, so. And last, last year he went without a reputation. This year he goes as top dog, cross best and show winner. Yeah, you, no, but you know what that means. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. that's not always a good thing. You know, so long as he shows well and looks good, I don't think he's got anything to prove at this stage, so. And what might be interesting is Ricky might come up against his father Dino. Yeah, because the girl who's judging's used his father twice, mm. um, so obviously they're excited at the prospect of showing under yeah. her, so th there'll be a huge entry of standard poodles there, so it'll be a tough competition anyway. And you're, you're now a Crufts Best in Show winner, you're, you're on that elite list. Has that changed the way you've approached anything in the last month, or does it change your mindset at all? Well, no. My young standard bitch that got the reserve ticket at Crufts has been, who was never beaten in their classes, has had two seconds and a third. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know whether that's changed my mindset. It certainly brought us back down to earth with yeah. a bang. It's so, you know, it's interesting because I'm always about looking forward. It's been the way I've conducted everything in my life. You know, it's nice to look back occasionally and, and fondly on things that have happened. And again, you're, you're looking forward throughout the, the past month. I've seen Jason uploading lots of little video clips to Facebook of Shelties and toy poodles. So it's not standard poodles that you're focusing your attention on, is it? Well, the standards are, are really, you know, the big passion in our lives now. But we've got two really super young bitch American cockers, the best of which the crumb will end up with. We've got some toy poodle youngsters that look super, and um, Jason's got another litter of peaks that he's pleased with. And of course, you're here today as best in show judge. Judging must excite you as well. It's interesting, really. I mean, this is my first hound group. It's best in show at the Scottish Hound, and I'm looking forward to later when I get, get my hands on these dogs. The judging has always been something that is secondary. You know, for me personally, it's all about breeding and, and showing dogs to the best of our ability. But that said, when I see something that excites me of any breed, I, you know, I get a big buzz out of that. Well, I'm sure we will see you again throughout the year. Good luck for later on. Best of luck for 2014. Thank you very much. And um, thanks for talking to us. No problem, thanks.
Today we're in beautiful Springwood Park in Kelso for Hound Association of Scotland. Today the Best in Show judge is Mike Gadsby, breeder of this year's Crafts Best in Show winner. But first we need to take a look at some of the recent winners in the past few weeks. Now on last month's programme we said goodbye to her, but um, look who we found in Windy <laughs> Kelso. Nice to see you Marina. Hello, you just can't get rid of me. No, can't get rid of you at all. <laughs> uh, nice to see you. Thank um, you. Now the first stop uh, in recent weeks was Scottish Breeds, another one this side of the border, where uh, best in show judge there was Patsy Hollings, and awarded it to the same breed that won the show last year. Yeah, that's right, a bearded collie. Mm. This year's winner was one called Sengalus Breaking Dawn for Clover Bray. It was winning its second CC. Mm. Last year's best in show winner actually won its first CC. Oh, so, that's quite interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. But on the same day, actually, down at Stafford, well, a couple of hundred miles away, we had UK Toy being judged by Anne Ingram. The best yes, and judge she awarded it to a repeat winner, a Yorkshire Terrier, champion Japanese, international Norwegian Finnish champion, Royal Precious, JP's F4 Juliana. That's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, it is. Um, now, we watched her last year taking best in show at UK Toy. That was shortly after winning a group placing at Crafts. She won another group placing this year and then goes on to take best in show again at the UK's premier toy dog show. And the following week, it mm. was the turn of the Terriers back at Stafford Agricultural Centre. Yeah, best in show judge at National Terrier was John Bunting. And if you've been watching Around the Dog World any time in the last year, this is a very familiar face. That's right, Oliver takes another best in show win. Yeah. <laughs> um, his show career actually isn't even 12 months old yet because Maybe. we first saw him come out at Welks and wow. well now 10 all breeds best in show wins four reserve best in shows Incredible. and now 18 group wins to his name it's just a, f a phenomenal few months for him yeah and that of course brings us to today hound association of scotland here in kelso now before we take a look at any of the hounds as this is the first around the dog world here in scotland we thought we should take a look at some of the nation's native breeds at the poscas last month one of the breeders nominated was the hernwood kennel of gordon setters we went to speak to them about this breed which can be traced back to gordon castle in moray Thank you very much, Chris and Pete, and Saf, of course. Now, we first have to start with this breed's name. Why is it the Gordon Setter? Well, it's called the Gordon Setter because the most well-known person who bred them and established black and tan setters was the Duke of Gordon, and he's well documented because he sold an awful lot of them in the late 1800s. Originally, the setters were all interbred people didn't care what color they were as long as they worked and they were bred to find game birds and to flush them out all the setters are, are named after actually to set in the original days of guns etc it took a long time to fire a gun so the dog had to find the bird and be ready to flush the bird out that suggests they need an awful lot of exercise as, as a breed today they do need a reasonable amount of exercise. People don't necessarily need to have a huge amount of their own ground or massive gardens as long as they're prepared to spend the time taking them out somewhere where they can go have a good run and stretch their legs. And they do need a lot of socialising. As youngsters, they need to go out and meet people, meet other dogs, go out into the town. Otherwise, they can turn out to be quite shy in some respects. But when a Safi came in this morning, she's certainly not shy at all. No, not at all. <laughs> but she has been well socialised. The history of Gordons goes back 150 years, but it took until 2012, LK, for the breed to win its first Best in Show. It must be an incredible feeling to have won the first Best in Show for the breed. I don't think it's something that can ever be recreated, that feeling. It was a very funny day, really, because as we got to LKA, the wheels came off the trolley. Okay. We thought that was going to set the tone, but yeah. then we did well in the breed. We qualified a young dog for the Pup of the Year final. And like we literally had five minutes from the end of the group to go into best in show. The, the feeling when uh, pulled out the Gordon Setter was just amazing. It's not yeah. something I think we thought we'd see perhaps ever. So what is it you look for in a good Gordon? When we're choosing a puppy, we look for confirmation first. Head and temperament to a certain extent. And you want that nice, easy flowing movement. It looks as though it can work all day and it should be able to work all day. But they are supposedly one of the slowest maturing breeds, aren't they? I think it's, it, it's quite an attraction that they are a slow maturing breed, I think, because then, okay, they start out as puppies and they should be learning to enjoy showing and that's pretty darn important, I think. Yeah. But then as they go through, they're, they're hopefully in the prime when it comes to two, three, four, five, 
even six and seven years of age. And, and I think that's a real attraction about showing Gordon setters. How do you describe the temperament of a Gordon? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I've heard people describe English setters as, as fairly dozy, and I've heard people describe Irish setters as, as staying teenagers till the uh, veterans. But I've heard people describe Gordon setters as biddable, and I think that's very, very true. I think if you invest in that puppy, whether it's for show or for a pet, and get it to train and do the things you want it to do, by the time of 18 months, when it's got past the teenage stage, it'll be a very well-rounded dog, and hopefully in the case of a show dog, thoroughly loves and wants to show. But they're, they're not everybody's choice because they are a fairly large dog. They carry a lot of coat, and that does need some attention, even as a pet. I think the market makes them really attractive, and I think also you were saying earlier they're not the most popular of breeds. So when you take a Gordon Setter out and take it out and about around a park or into town, people either know what a Gordon Setter is and want to stop and chat, or they say, oh, that's a lovely spaniel, or, you know, what kind of breed is that and want to chat. So you started with the intention of having them as pets. How are they as, as just pets? Well, we really, really love them. We've always got somebody in the house. And as you can see, they love us. <laughs> but they are, very, they are a very affectionate dog, and they do like a lot of human contact. And if, if they've had the correct amount of exercise, normally in the evening, they're quite happy to lie down and watch TV with you. The one thing that uh, we always say is just regard this old adage that, you know, one human year is seven dog years. So you've got to be careful and, and treat the, the upbringing, you know, the amount of exercise, the amount of feeding, the amount of socialisation in that kind of category. But no, they make great pets. They're very much a people dog. Come back after the break to find out more about another native Scottish breed, this time the Dandy Dinman Terrier. Breeder of 31 Dandy Dinman champions, that's quite a record. Thank you. Um, now, tell us, a, tell us a little bit about the breed. How did you get started? Well, the first time I saw a Dandy was actually at a Scottish Breeds show. And at that time, I bred Bearded Collies. And from that, I, I got my first Dandy. Once you have one, for me anyway, nothing less will do. They are just really get under your skin. And tell us about the confirmation of a dandy, because they're quite different from most other dogs in the terrier group. They are, because they have that quite unique top line, or should have, which is really an elongated S shape. A slight dip behind the shoulder and with a corresponding arch over the loin and a slight follow away to the root of tail. And the head is also quite important as well. Yes, very distinctive head, large and strongly made and of course a strong muscle because without that strong muscle with extraordinary development of the maxillary muscle then you wouldn't be able to get the punishing power that a dandy required for the job he was bred to do which was to go to ground for fox and badger. He should have that distinct silky covering on his head because when he goes to a hole yeah. for fox or badger often all they got when they grabbed him was his top knot. And if, when you look back at dandies from the early days, the 1800s, and look at them now, there's very little change mm. in the breed. Tell us a bit more about, about the history. How did the breed come about? Well, the breed is one of the old, oldest recorded breeds in history. Um, but it, it's really, depending on whose point of view um, you take, uh, it either evolved from the terriers of Scotland or it um, uh, came about with mixtures, for example, with um, maybe some Dachshund thrown in. But the, so the origins aren't entirely clear, but what is clear is that there were these packs of mustard and pepper terriers kept by farmers and others in the Scottish border area, and um, they were much prized for the gameness. And the breed then got what you could call almost notoriety when Sir, Al Sir Walter Scott wrote about them in his novel Guy Manring and um, one particular farmer in the area he described him almost perfectly and so he then adopted <laughs> the name of Dandy Dinmont and dandies were much prized and 
much sought after and for a time became very popular. And then they were, they were also owned by landed gentry and, and Queen Victoria had a dandy. Yeah. And they're the only breed of dog ever to be named by a literary source. So You, you said about the mustard and pepper there. That colour is still held today? Is the, yes, the two, the two colours. Um, yeah. And mustard is anything from a pale fawn colour to a rich dark mustard and peppers are anything from pale silver all the way through to almost black and again they have differing colouring shading on the body in particular the silvery white head but the legs and feet should be between a pale fawn colour and tan. And temperament, are there any specifics to a dandy's temperament that you can point out? Oh, the, the, the standard uses seven words to describe a dandy's temperament. He's both highly independent, persistent, determined, stubborn, <laughs> affectionate, all of those things wrapped up in one bundle. They have a particularly individual temperament and I suppose everybody says that about their own breed but yeah. but they do and they're tremendously affectionate and loving and very very loyal but you know they're not always the easiest show dog. If it coincides with what they want to do they can be outstanding show dogs. <laughs> and obviously temperament is, is vitally important to, to yes. having a dandy as a pet. Oh um, absolutely. Do they make good pets? Yes they do and they're very affectionate and good with children and I would highly recommend them. Earlier on, you said mm. that they, they were very popular. Yes, yes. But today, that's not the case. There aren't, yeah. there aren't nearly as many as, as there were. Yeah, the popularity has hugely declined from mm. their peak late 1800s, early 1900s. But at Andy, I don't know why, really, because with their size, they suit smaller houses that yeah. you have today. And the thing that always interests me is people say, what is it? So perhaps we need to do a bit more about seeing how good they are. Now we've got some knowledge about some Scottish native breeds, let's turn our attention to best in show here at Hound Association of Scotland. Judge today is Mike Gatwick. Now before the breeds come in for the main judging, we have our imported registered breed, a Trinica Etna, who will do a lap of honour. Now leading the breeds in, is the Afghan Hound. This breed was judged today by Mrs. Vivian Phillips. Number 46, which is a bitch, was best of breed. There were 71 dogs, giving 82 entries. On the table now is the Bazenji. These were judged by Mr. D. Cullen. He had 23 dogs with 40 entries. His best of breed was the dog Number 96, the judge is now going over the Basset Town. Earlier on today, we spoke to an undisputed expert in this unmistakable breed. Thank you very much for joining us, Siegfried Peter. You are across from Germany today, is that right? Yes. And you've, you've just been watching the, the Basset Hounds being judged. Uh, what did you think of the, the entry today? It was quite a good entry for this time we had here. And also, oh, the quality was not bad, but it was not on this level what I have seen before in this country also. But I have seen them for 50 years nearly, and so it's up and down going. Um, and, and breeders are, are clearly working very hard. To, of course, to... it's very hard, and I think it's very hard to breed Basset Hounds. Mm. The standard asks for loose skin on the head and good dew lips then you cannot have a closed eye rhyme. It's not possible, it has to go down because it's also heavy down yes. here. And I think people, even some judges are not so sure anymore, but also the standards sometimes a bit, a bit funny. Sorry to say this. <laughs> what was a Basset bred for originally? For hair hunting on foot. Right. After the French Revolution, a big landowners was going to the guillotine, took, yes. and the, her land was given to other people in little pieces. Yes. And in this time, they had these lovely French uh, hounds, similar to the, you know, your fox hounds, yes. different sizes. And then in these little pieces of wood they had, the big hounds was too fast right. <laughs> and so they selected from the packs 
the short-legged dogs. Right. And this, the bass, bass is deep. If you have a singer, bass is deep and yeah. bass is low to the ground. Right. That's bassé, but basset down. French, they have different bassés. Yeah. Artisan Normand, they have the uh, Griffon von Dane. Yeah. They have the uh, Fauve de Bretagne and they have the Bleu Gascogne. Yeah. Now, you, you judge the breed of crafts. What is it a judge is looking for in a basset hound? For me, most important is that you have a feeling for harmony and for balance yeah. and the movement. If a dog cannot move right, then the construction cannot be OK. It's a hunting dog, it's had to good to move. And basset hounds are very well known around the world and many people have them as pets and many people want them as pets. What advice do you give to pet owners that want a basset hound? Don't feed him too much. <laughs> <laughs> I always say even a basset hound can have a special elegance. Mm. He can be a good companion as a uh, house dog with yeah. his family and his children. And mm. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. These were judged today by Mr P. McGarry Arthurs. 43 dogs gave 48 entries. Best of breed was the dog, number 168. On the table now is the Petit Basset Griffin Vendion. These were judged by Mr. Tom Donston. He had 17 dogs, giving 21 entries. And best of breed was the dog, number 120. Next we have the Grand Basset Griffin Vendion. Judged by Mrs. Marilyn Persgloff. 15 dogs gave 26 entries. The best to breed was the dog 108. <laughs> Next to be seen is the Basset Fauve de Britannia, judged by Mr. Keith Persglove. Five dogs gave nine entries. Best of breed was a dog number 104. Come back after the break for more from Best in Show, plus we take a closer look at more of today's hounds. If uh, the new chairman were sat in the audience tonight, yes. what would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. On the table now is the Beagle, and this is the next breed that we take a look at. Today we stopped off at one of the breed's most successful kennels of all time, Rosset, um, and we are joined by Patricia Sutton. Thank you for letting us stop in, Pat. My pleasure. Um, now, best place to start, uh, the beginning. Uh, how did you get involved in Beagles? Well, um, as I'm sure um, most of the dog show people know, my parents were very much involved in dogs, and mother started breeding boxes, in fact, in the mid 50s and then moved on to breed beagles so of course i've been brought up with uh, beagles since i was about 10 years old <laughs> and uh, yes there was never any question really <laughs> take us back further how was the beagle as a breed developed well uh, you go really way 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 back i mean the romans uh, and the Greeks before them were all supposed to have hunted with very small hounds. Mm. And of course, when they invaded England, they probably brought a few of those little, little hounds with them. And in time, um, they became the small uh, mix of the southern and northern hounds. Right. And beag or beagle is a form of French for small, right. which obviously is a beagle. And have there been developments in the breeds in more recent times? Well, I think we've had, uh, probably 50 years ago, we had a big influx of uh, American bred dogs. Nice. Interestingly, of course, in the mid-80s, 1860 mm. onwards, 1880, 
there was a great influx of beagles from this country to America. Right, so it was the return. It was the return, yes. And that sort of development surely must have changed type in some way. Over the yes, I mean, I think they've become much more elegant, um, a much more athletic little dog, and the hunting type and the showing type from about the 1950s uh, certainly has grown quite a long way apart. Right. And despite being a, a British native breed, uh, they are massively popular overseas as well. Um, you spoke about um, being in North yes, America. Yes, yes. Well, they're all over the world. I mean, there were packs formed in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, uh, wherever the British colonised, they took their beagles with them. Right. What do you think it is about the beagle that, that makes them so popular? Well, I think today they're a small dog they're a clean dog, they've got no coat mm. to be um, too worried about. They are a healthy little dog. Uh, they are obedient if you train them properly, <laughs> but they should always be a really lovely, they make your family their pack. And in most people's mind, when they think of a beagle, it's immediately a, a tricolour dog comes to mind, but it's not the only colour you get in beagle, is it? No, and I, this country particularly has, we show, particularly tan and whites, lemon and whites. We've got some breeders who've concentrated on keeping the mottled colour alive. Ah, right, yes. And now across the world, they're beginning to realise, and certainly pet people are becoming more realistic about asking for col different colours. Mm. In breed rings at champ shows, uh, the competition is always incredibly strong. Yeah. Um, but what is a judge looking for in a good one? Well, they're looking for a reasonably compact little dog, should be a little bit longer than square, of a very happy temperament, particularly good shoulders, and one of the major things with a beagle is a really lovely head. Right. Uh, and if you see a beagle looking at you and it just melts, that's the correct expression. Now, because they are so popular, there will be many people watching uh, with one of these hounds curled up at the feet, uh, but no, about, no doubt many more uh, that perhaps would like one. So, do beagles make good pets and how are they with children? Well, I've always found them brilliant with children. Um, I get several families looking for puppies and even from an early age, they're all wanting to talk to the children. And, you know, they seem to be drawn to children. <laughs> Again, if you treat them properly and have parameters of rules, so that they know exactly what they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, they're well-mannered. Um, I usually find, actually, if the families have got well-mannered children, they'll <laughs> manage a beagle fine. <laughs> Beagles were judged today by Mrs Linda Havard. She had 63 dogs, giving 86 entries. Best of breed was the bitch, 236. The next breed to be judged is the Borzoi. This breed was judged today by Mrs. Diana Martin. 29 dogs gave 37 entries. Best to breed a dog number 248. On the table now is the long haired Dachshund. These were judged today by Mrs. Jill Peak. 20 dogs gave 32 entries. Best to breed was the dog two four sorry two seven four. Where's the judge's book? Because that's got to be filled out with all the numbers and everything. Next we have the miniatures long haired dachshund. These were judged today by Mr. Albert White. Thirty one dogs gave thirty four entries. Best of breed was the dog number 303. On the table now is the miniature wire haired dachshund. These were judged by Mrs. Jill Peake. 22 dogs gave 29 entries. Her best of breed was a dog number 368. The breed on the table now is the wire-haired dachshund, judged today by Mr. Alf Woods. One dog was here, 
with two entries, best to breed, the bitch, three, four, nine. Next up from Mike is the Deerhound, and this being the only native Scottish hound, we just had to take a closer look. Alison Morton, we saw you winning the Hound Group at Midland Counties last year. We're with you again today at Kelso to find out a bit about the Deerhound. Um, now tell us a bit about the history of the breed. The, the name perhaps gives it away, but what was it bred for? Yes, it was a, it was a native Scottish breed, um, bred to hunt red deer on the, on the hills of Scotland. A sort of Scottish greyhound, if you like. Um, and what about the temperament? I don't think I've ever seen a deerhound look frustrated or anything. They're always relaxed and look quite gentle. They are as adults, yes, mm. until a deer gets up or some quarry gets up, <laughs> and then they're a totally different breed. Um, very, very naughty puppies. And if you can get them to adulthood without wanting to strangle them, they are the most wonderful <laughs> dogs. They're lovely temperament, get on very well with other animals. And they're, they're quite a big breed, so that suggests they need an, an awful lot of exercise. They'll take as much as you'll give them as adults, really. Mm. Um, they also can be quite lazy. They're, <laughs> quite, they're quite, quite happy to sit in front of a fire and watch the deli with you. Um, but no, they, they do like a good run every day. They are a galloping hound yeah. and they keep themselves fit and it keeps them sane as well if they can burst some energy out like that every yeah. day. Um, does that, of course, mean you need quite a lot of space to, to, to work a deer hound and to let them run around? Well, yeah, not necessarily to keep them as long as you're prepared to take them. Um, we're very lucky in that we have two beaches very, very close to us. Um, yeah, they can get a good old gallop in the water as well, Fantastic. which they love. You mentioned the temperament is quite different as a puppy, but exercise as a puppy, is that quite different as well? Yes. <clears throat> You've got to be very, very careful with any of the, any of the big breeds, actually, um, who take a long time to grow, mm. joint security is always to the fore most actually when they're growing a um, little bit of free running in the garden no road walking until they're at least a year old and then right. very carefully and I re always reckon if you look after their joints when they're they're under sort of 14 15 months mm. you, you should be okay for the rest of their lives okay. um, and uh, deerhound's appearance it's quite a, a striking looking dog but it's often mm. mistaken for an Irish wolfhound yes. how do you tell the two apart the, the, the layman's way of doing it when I'm talking to maybe a pet person who will mm. stop me if, if you can imagine a hairy greyhound mm. th they are they are bigger and a little heavier bone but the easiest way to remember is a hairy greyhound like a deerhound and a hairy great Danes like an Irish wolfhound yeah. they've got I've, that I've sort of that build way, yeah that's, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's sort of way. thing and what about what the judge is looking for in, in a good deer hound? Looking, still looking for a dog which was, could do the job that it was bred to do. Yeah. Um, and the deer hound is actually one of these breeds which has not changed very much over the yeah. years. Um, it's only just recently that they've stopped coursing because obviously of the law yeah. in Britain now. They do some, some lure coursing now. But um, very famous, the world famous kennel, the Argonglass kennel up in yeah. Argyll. Um, always hunted over Daver Moor and there's lots of lovely old archive pictures of, of lots of deer hounds hunting through the snow and people looking really bedraggled and cold but hunting through the snow up at Daver Moor. A bit like outside today. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, and they're not a particularly common breed but are they good to have around the home? Great pets, really get on well with people, um, get on well with other animals unless they run very fast <laughs> mm. and then they, they will give chase. They're not very common because not everybody has the facilities to keep a large hound like that. Yeah. What I found in the deerhound breeders is it tends to be real breed enthusiasts who have the breed and they are actually still on the endangered list at the moment. Mm. Um, my one regret with deerhounds is that I didn't have them years ago. <laughs> um, I spent I've dogs for maybe nearly 35 years. Yeah. Um, my main breed, which I've shown all that time, were miniature wire haired dachshunds. Right. And I always had a sight hound or two around the house, but mm. I really regret not having them years ago. They're these wonderful again. dogs. The kind of being a typical sight hound and sort of far gazing, mm. um, it, they do almost look into your soul. <laughs> they, 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 they have that kind of look. They're just wonderful, wonderful dogs. Deer hounds were judged today by Mrs. Shirley Rawlings. 44 dogs gave 57 entries. Best of breed was a bitch, number 404. Come back after the break to find out who Mike Gadsby chooses as his best in show winner.
we have the finished spits. Finished spits were judged today by Mrs. Marilyn Persglov. Eight dogs gave eight entries. Best to breed was a dog, number 419. Next to be judged is the Greyhound. Greyhounds were judged by Mr. Albert White. Seven dogs gave 12 entries, and best to breed was a bitch, number 430. The breed who has now joined us is the Hamilton Strawberry. These were judged today by Mr. Tom Johnston. Seven dogs gave eight entries. His best to breed was a bitch, number 439. The breed now being examined is the Irish Wolfhound. These were judged today by Mr. Peter Pask. 36 dogs gave 50 entries and his best of breed went to a dog, number 465. Next we have the Norwegian Elk Hound. Elk Hounds were judged by Mrs. Nicola Croxford. She had 25 dogs, giving 43 entries. Best of breed was a bitch, Four, seven, six. The breed now on the table is the Portuguese Pedengo. Mr. Albert White judged this breed. There were three dogs with three entries. Best of breed was a bitch. Five, zero, nine. Next we have the Rhodesian Ridgeback. These were judged today by Mr. Eddie Patterson. 58 dogs gave 78 entries. His best to breed went to the bitch, number 517. Next we have the Saluki. Salukis were judged today by Mrs. Joanne Mahan. There were 37 dogs giving 52 entries. Her best to breed was the dog, number 573. On the table, we have the Whippet. This breed was judged by Mrs. Morag Bolton Lockhart, who was the biggest entry of the day with 140 dogs giving 180 entries. Her best of breed was the dog number 742. Finally, we come to the not classified classes. These were won today by a foxhound. They were judged by Mr. Albert White. There were four dogs giving four entries. And best of breed was number 751, the dog. Now that concludes the examination of the individual breeds. And I'm sure the judge will pull out a few into a short list for another look and into the middle of the ring the afghan hound the basset hound the beagle long-haired dachshund the deer hound the greyhound norwegian elk hound rhodesian ridgeback and the whippet and thank you to all of those who are leaving the ring Now the judge is going to move them all again, so if you have any favourites, please give them some support.
Number four, three, zero. Then to second. Second place, the long haired Daxon. Third place, the Whippet. And finally, the Beagle. Jerry and Una, congratulations. Uh, best in show. How do you feel? Absolutely elated, beyond my wildest dreams. It must be quite satisfying. Greyhound's breed was judged by Albert White, a top all-rounder. Mike Gasby, Cruft's Best in Show winner this year. That's a sensational judging line. Absolutely delighted. Albert gave her mother, the mother of these ones, uh, uh, the best puppy at uh, South Wales many years ago. Yeah. And uh, he'd seen her when she was a pup and he always quite liked her, so I came hopeful <laughs> but so we we're delighted to get best of breed lindsay shows you dogs and to go best and show at the hound show absolutely delighted yeah and a, a specialist show that must be it's, extra of, of course it is aye it's fantastic well it's good to win at any show yeah. but when you win at a hound show as you say and more so under a renowned judge like albert and uh, best in show owner yes at uh, crofts aye fantastic and what is it about una that, that judges appreciate I don't know, you would need to ask them that. <laughs> I could tell you what I appreciate about her, but because I think she's got a lovely head, length of neck, good shoulder, and she's got a good forechest. She's, she's a lovely greyhound, well yeah. made, well made greyhound. And has she done any winning before? She was made up when she was very young at two, and this is the first time she's been shown in two years. Wow. We, we took her out of the ring because we've made up four of the other siblings. <laughs> we've made up two of her sisters, and that's her brother there who's got seven tickets, and we've got another brother with eight tickets. So we've wow. made five up at that litter, so we're absolutely delighted. Uh, that, that's an incredible litter there. Fantastic litter, fantastic. Well, congratulations. A beautiful setting to do it in. Um, have a great trip home. I will do. <laughs> an, hour's, an hour and a half drive, delighted. But we'll go home in about ten minutes. <laughs> we'll be flying. Zara Boyle and Zara Crest Hugo Boss, reserve best in show at Home Association of Scotland. A, a fantastic win today. Wonderful win, thank you. Yes, absolutely fabulous. You, you looked a little bit shocked in there. Yes, a little bit surprised. I think you're always surprised. You've been so busy concentrating. Um, and it, but this is not his first big win, is it? No, he's actually had two um, group firsts and three group twos and a group three. A, a, a fantastic winning record. He does an awful lot for the breed in the ring. He, he, he stands out, I think. Yes, he does. He, he has a superb top line on the move, and I think he really kicks out well behind. Yeah. Um, and, of course, he's only two years old. So a, a very young dog, so you're hoping for lots more. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, congratulations, and I'm sure we'll see you later on the year. Thank you. So, best in show and best puppy in show job, Mike Gadsby. How did you, you find your first hound group in there? I really enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah, there was... Um, uh, some really nice dogs in there, so it was good, and I was surprised to find myself ending up with a greyhound for best and a greyhound for best puppy. But it is what it is, you know. Greyhounds are us. Yes, they're in vogue this month. <laughs> um, now tell us about your your winner. Why why was it top of the group? Um, well, she's got an exquisite head, and if a greyhound can be glamorous, I think it's like a real feminine. It it, it has all this this grace and style. And, you know, she's beautiful, absolutely beautiful bitch, and she carries herself beautifully on the move. And the dog puppy? I think he's going to be something remarkable. He's got this incredible shape. You know, you're trying to predict the future with puppies to yeah. a degree. I think that's going to be something certainly to watch out for. I think he's a really outstanding. And quite masculine. 
Yeah, I mean, not, nothing heavy about him. Very, again, a, a real elegance and a touch of class. A real lovely young young male, yeah. And take us down your your best in show uh, lineup. Second in the group the was the standard long haired accent, yes. ultrasound, beautiful to go over. Really good front and rear assemblies. Nothing exaggerated. He, he's got length without length of loin. Mm. Um, beautifully put down, really sound on the move, keeps his top line, very nice. And last year's top hound, the Whippet, was, was third in line? Yes, I've, I've judged Whippets, um, I don't think it was last year. He's very, running, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I had him there, he's a very, very nice dog, very sound, very stylish dog, very nice. And of course, third was the Beagle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think it's quite a young bitch, only about 19 months old. She was, I, I forgave her her youth because <laughs> she was messing around a little bit, you know, but she's young and she was messing around in a good way. She was ha overly happy, so, but she was sound and very nice to go over. And it's been a bit of a blustery day, change of conditions, you yeah, moved sure. outside to inside, that disrupts your, your thought pattern, are we able to just to, to get in the ring? And, and no, 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 it was no problem. Uh, I mean, we made the work ring a little bit wider, it was a bit thin at first, but it was fine, yeah, no problem. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your, your yeah, group. I had a great time, thank you very much indeed, thank you. So, there we are, we finished the day with Greyhounds topping the Hound and Hound Puppy Group. No experts with me here this weekend, I'm all alone in Kelso, but all there is left to say is thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time on Around the Dog World at Welks Championship Show.